You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Hello and welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. All right, so I want to let you know that we are taping on Wednesday, November 9th. The markets are closed. We're taping the day after the midterm elections. So now the biggest thing about the markets, what markets usually like is they have a known as opposed to an unknown. We have a big number coming out tomorrow, though, that I think will actually trump the midterm elections, and that is the CPI number. Uh, Everybody's waiting to see if inflation is waning. Uh, The last couple of times around uh, that we talked about CPI, almost everybody was saying, well, uh, it looks like inflation has peaked and expecting inflation to wane a little bit. Uh, If we look at gas prices, we look at house prices, kind of hoping that eventually that works into that CPI number. It takes some time to do that. But so in general, a lot of the commodities are down. Housing is a big part of the CPI. And that has um, all the indications from all the companies that have announced earnings is that housing prices are coming down. We just need to see if it shows up in the CPI number. And the direction is much more important than the size of the movement. Uh, We just want to see as far as the markets are concerned, the markets would just like to see that CPI number going down. Uh, hinting to the fact that maybe inflation is turning uh, to the downside and the Fed can slow down on their uh, Fed rate hikes. Okay, so we have a known. So the VIX index, which is trading was trading yesterday just below 26, you're kind of hoping that that trend would continue because we did have the midterm elections and that usually helps out. It was an unknown and now unknown. And then uh, if we get any rally in the marketplace at all, you would expect the VIX to come down. Well, the VIX didn't come down. The VIX is up 55 cents on the day. Uh, for the VIX index, that's not a big deal, but it's at trading at 26.09. What has happened is there was a lot of news in the crypto space. I don't actually want to go down that road because as we tape, there's breaking news that's coming out uh, uh that centers around the crypto marketplace. Uh, Cryptos, currencies in general have been beaten up today. And so that kind of made the market swing. The markets were uh, flat to up a little bit. And now the SPX turned and the NASDAQ and also the Dow. And we see that the SPX today is down 2% and the NASDAQ is down 2.3%. So makes it really hard to try to pick a pick a stock, especially going into the CPI number. So I basically am going to punt this week, and I'm going to talk about the VIX. 
We very rarely look at the VIX because it's such a oddball instrument to trade, but it is a popular index. There are quite a few people that trade it, but one of the biggest things to understand about the VIX is if you pull up an option chain under the symbol VIX and you go out further in time, you need to realize that that underlying that marks those option prices is a futures contract. It's not the actual spot index that is the VIX. Okay, so we're going to do a short, short-term trade on the VIX. Uh, we got some news today and expected the VIX index to actually go down because of that. The VIX has held its own and gone up a little bit today. CPI is going to come out tomorrow. Now, the market could have a huge downturn, so we want to limit our risk. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell a little bit of volatility premium in the VIX index. And to find out the volatility premium, you actually have a little index that you might have heard of, which is called the VVIX. That's the VIX of the VIX. It's the volatility based off of the option prices inside the VIX index. Now, that did run up uh, around 7% today. The VIX went up 55 cents or about 2%. The VVIX went up $5.51. And to be more accurate, that's up 6.5%. So we got a little bit extra juice in the option contracts. And that probably has something to do with the CPI number that's going to come out tomorrow. At the beginning of the month in November, the VVIX was around that 80% level. It's uh, obviously a very volatile index, we'll say around, and it hung around that at the beginning of the month. And now we see it trading up towards the 90 level, which means implies that we're getting a little bit more juice in our option contract uh, now than we would at the beginning of November. Okay, so let's sell some of that premium. Now, this trade is definitely not meant to be a recommendation, and I apologize for kind of laughing about that. If you've never traded the VIX index, I think you should look into it. You should watch it, but you definitely want to do this on paper. This is uh, not a, a – the VIX index isn't something to be traded by a novice option trader. You've got to understand the ins and outs of the VIX. And if you want to, I'll even say – Send me an email. I, I have a blog that I've written on the VIX index that kind of talks about everything that goes along with the VIX. So go ahead and send me an email, theoptionsguy at invest.ally.com, and I'll be happy to share with you uh, the, the most basic VIX index blog that, I, that I've ever put together. And I'll just send that out to you. So go ahead and send me an email. But with that said, let's, let's jump into that VIX index trade. And we'll just do a quick mention. Uh, last week, actually, before we get into the VIX index, so I digress. Uh, last week, we looked at IWM, and I usually recap that trade, but the market's just so uh, all over the place today that I kind of forgot about what trade we were talking about last week. But in the IWM, we decided to look at it at either as a speculative bearish trade in the Russell 2000 index. And that's what the IDM, IWM tracks. It's an ETF that tracks the Russell 2000 index. Now, we did a fairly wide put spread. And in hindsight, the put spreads are doing good. Uh, that the markets came down today and they closed down quite a bit. So IWM was down very similar to what the in other indexes were today. It was down 2.66% or $4.77. And the last trade was 174.79. Once again, the markets are closed. It is November 9th. So last week when we looked at the trade, uh, we billed it as, well, you could look at this as a speculative trade to get bearish on the small caps. Or if you have some small caps in your portfolio, this might be an inexpensive way to actually give yourself some protection going into all the news that was coming out this week including the CPI. So we went out to the November 18th expiration, try to get through this uh, most recent news cycle, and we bought the 175 strike put and sold the 165 strike put. 10 points wide, we paid $2.66 for that trade at the midpoint. Markets were closed at the time. So that's what we were looking at. Uh, market was at 177.49. Let's round it off to 177.50. Uh, we come today, we look at the markets at that's 174.79. So obviously, 
We came down, we hit the short strike. The trade is doing okay. I don't know why you wouldn't just stay the course on the trade. Uh, right now, we see the midpoint on the trade at $2.96. It's doing its job. It's protecting us. It's uh, paying it off if we are just using it for pure speculation. So just you would ride the trade and uh, see what happens over the next couple of weeks. All right. So CPI, VIX. This week, we're going to come around and look at that VIX index and Hopefully, we'll get a little bit of a decrease in implied volatility. The news won't be too bad tomorrow. I mean, real, if, if we got a big downturn in CPI, it could be very positive for the markets, which would actually be bad for the IWM trade that we looked at last, uh, last week. But for the VIX, uh, we just want volatility to either stay where it's at or come off. We're going to do a very short-term trade, which I usually do in the VIX. We are definitely going to sell an option contract and buy it. Very rarely would I ever do... Uh, anything naked in the VIX index just because there's so much volatility premium that are that are in the option contracts in general. So if we look at the VIX, the VIX right now is 2609. We're going to go out to the very short term uh, option contract, the November 16th expiration, seven days away. And if we look at that future futures contracts that uh, that expires when these option contracts would expire, which is November 16th, which is a Wednesday. Um, if we look at that option contract, we will see that uh, the future is trading at 26.85. So it is up uh, compared to where the VIX is at. So we're are in the future, we're trading at a higher implied volatility than where the VIX is trading at or the spot index is at right now. So that's going to add a little bit of juice into the, to those option contracts. I already told you that the VIX is up a little, uh, up, you know, quite a quite a bit today, a good chunk, trading around ninety percent implied volatility on the VIX. Uh, these option contracts have a lot of juice in them. So we're going to sell the twenty eight strike call, and we're going to hedge ourselves by buying the thirty strike call. Very limited risk, very speculative trade. We're going to able right now. The markets are wide, but the markets are closed. So I do want to emphasize that um, that you have good open interest, you have good volumes. When the markets are open, the VIX markets are usually fairly tight, but right now they're showing a little bit wide. Uh, for example, the option contract that we're selling is trading uh, on the bid at ninety-three cents and on the ask at one thirty. So we're really going to be working off midpoint prices here, but we're going to be selling the twenty-eight strike call. And at the same time, buying the 30 strike call. The midpoint is right around 40 cents. We're going to call it 40 cents for this paper trade. And obviously, you can't guarantee a midpoint fill. But if I can't trade somewhere close to 40 cents on this trade, I don't want to put this trade on. Uh, we're, uh, you know, a point and some change out of the money. Uh, so we're fairly close to where the, the VIX is at. We're hoping that the news tomorrow and, uh, comes out and we get a little bit of a decrease in the VIX and the volatility because, once again, uh, the markets would like a known news event more than an unknown potential news event, right? So uh, that's what we're just looking to do, a very simple trade. And it really came from the fact that I don't know what else to trade this week, uh, considering what ha has happened with crypto. Uh, usually after the midterm elections, uh, it's a good news overall, going all the way back to 1950. This has been quoted many times by many pundits. Uh, the market is usually up one year after the midterm elections, uh, and it's done that ever since 1950. Uh, one of the things that scares me about it is everybody's talking about it. So uh, if you take a contrarian view, sometimes when it's when every every single uh, pundit is talking about it and every news service is talking about it, a lot of people will get contrarian on that concept. But uh, we do have you know, a, a tough marketplace. <laughs> I don't know what, what has happened every year for the midterm since 1950s, but, you know, we have the Fed being extremely hawkish four three quarter point uh, rate hikes over the last four Fed meetings. So uh, that, that those are some strong headwinds to to try to make make the markets positive, not to mention the geopolitical concerns, which we can't ever forget about those. All right. So that's going to be our trade. We're going to go to the November 16th expiration, seven days away. We're going to sell a short call spread, otherwise known as a uh, call credit spread. It is bearish, neutral to bearish on the market. We're going to sell the 28 strike call, 
by the 30 strike call. We're looking to get this done for a net credit of 40 cents to the account. And uh, we're two points wide. So if we do this, the maximum we can make on the trade would be 40 cents. The maximum that we could lose on the trade would be a dollar 60. It's a lot of juice in this trade. It's kind of, you can try to manage the trade if you'd like. If obviously the VIX spiked up tomorrow, you have a lot of time. Uh, it, seven days is a lot of times in the VIX, VIX index and you, uh, that premium would help you try to get out of that trade. If we did see a spike up towards that 30 level where your long call or your protection is at, uh, if the markets start going down, it'll take a few days for time decay to work. Um, but if I could buy this trade back for a dime, 15 cents, I am definitely want to do that trade sooner than later. Uh, VIX is a very volatile trade, but you know, we always look at it on a one by one basis. So, um, that's going to be it for this episode of options playbook radio. Uh, if, you have any questions you'd like us to try to address, please send them to me at the options guy at invest.li.com. If you'd like to learn more about the educational events that we do over here at Ally Invest, please just follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Brian Overby. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.